everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome to a brand new video. Today I thought I would film a fun little video trying to get your tips on how to style the new master bedroom wardrobe and ensuite room because it is pretty much, I don't want to say finished, it's not finished. It's got final touches that need to be done to it. But, but I've got about a thousand ideas running around in my head of where I want to put things and I thought that you could help me with that and it would make for a nice video. I've just started buying little bits so I can show you those things. But yeah, in the last few weeks that I've been away, I've had quite a lot going on. We have had all new internal doors fitted. It's just warming up the room a little bit more by having those. They're from Howden's and they are the oak cottage style doors. I will show you them up close in a second and then we'll go upstairs and I'll show you where we're up to with the master bedroom wardrobe and ensuite transformation. But yeah, what have you missed? My best friend got married, so I was maid of honour for that, um, and we had the best day. It, the weather was actually like this, it couldn't have been a more gorgeous summer's wedding, summer's day wedding, and the grounds were incredible. It's also been my wedding anniversary, so I've been celebrating that. We didn't do much, we literally just, it was on a Wednesday, so we finished work together, we went for a drive out to the beach, we got fish and chips at the seaside, and it was just the nicest little date night celebration that we wanted. Other than that, it's just been house stuff that we've been really cracking on with. Yeah, let's go upstairs and I'll show you where we're up to with the bedroom. You can leave some comments down below of what you think I should do, where you think I should put things, etc. Connie's trashing my house as usual. She's got the recycling. One sec. So these are the doors in the kitchen um, and we've got these everywhere apart from the dining room doors are glazed. Um, but I love them. I've gone for these handles all over kind of wanted knobs but it would have made it would have made the job a lot harder apparently I can't remember why now um, but we just went for a knob on the sliding door to the utility yeah so we've got them everywhere now and it's meaning that the other rooms that were looking really unfinished like the downstairs toilet is looking a little bit better now and then these are the dining room ones so yeah these are the only doors that are different really and then then that's the living room one. Oh, look at the um look at the card that Tom got me for our anniversary. How cute. Now I'll take you upstairs and show you where we're up to. So I did say it's very much still a blank canvas, but you can see we've got the new door on. Um this wall has had all the wallpaper stripped off and it's all been completely replastered. We've gone for um farrow and ball skimming stone on this one wall. Struggling whether or not to panel this, I love what panelling does, but I'm kind of scared to ruin the freshly plastered walls. Like, look how smooth they are. And I don't want to do panelling and hate it and then ruin the walls. We've got that in the wardrobe part as well, which I will show you in a minute. And then the rest, all the other walls, apart from the ceiling, which is brilliant white, has been painted in um, Dulux... I just had to check what it was called. It's called Timeless. It's kind of got like a stone grey kind of tone and it was recommended to me on Instagram actually. Quite a few people said um, to use that one and so I just thought I would go with what they said. I did try a few different testers. So the carpet is new and this is what we've got going up the stairs and landing at the moment and all the bedrooms are being done in this as well. It's called Alabaster. It's like a really good neutral I think. Um, and then the switches are pearl nickel switches. You can see we've got a new radiator and there's been one replaced a bit further down as well, which I'll show you in a sec. The window, oh my God, we've had so much stress with what to do with this window. It was either going to be Roman blinds or Venetian with curtains. Um, I would have liked shutters, but look how close the window is to that end of the wall. Even though it's four small windows, it's a very, very big window to put shutters in. And shutters are so expensive. Um, so we've decided to go with Venetian blinds and um, they've actually arrived but we're struggling to put them up because there's a big metal lintel that runs underneath the window so Tom needs a new drill bit or something. These are from, these are from Blinds to Go and they are in frost white. I just feel like if we don't have something else other than white Venetian blinds it might look a bit officey and not very cosy so i um, put some curtains in as well and just add a bit of texture because it's looking a little bit flat at the minute. One of the things that we've bought is this mirror. Now I kind of wanted a, uh, like a leaner mirror going against that wall there because when I'm in bed I'm going to be up against this wall here. I just thought it'd be nice to have like 
it looking like two arches but actually I feel like that wall there is too small for that mirror I feel like these mirrors look best when they're up against a longer wall especially if you imagine if I get like a plinth or something for next to it and then the curtains will sort of drape down next to it as well and you'll sort of see yourself in the mirror when you walk into the room and it just adds a little bit more interest over to that side um, and I feel like a chair would look better there. So let me know what you think should go in the corner. Whether you think the mirror should be up against that wall there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what both look like. So this is the way that I want it. Um, this is a frameless mirror, by the way, that we bought on Etsy. It's got this, like, mark on it, which I don't have a clue how to get off. But I'm not going to even try myself. Because I know I will either end up ruining it or smashing it or something or it'll end up falling over and um, but it's one of those leaner mirrors that just kind of goes up and i don't think that looks stupid lent up against that wall whereas when it's lent up against this one honestly i feel like it looks a bit daft let me show you that's what it looks like there sort of next to the arch oh i've got a feeling you're all gonna say put it in the corner rather than on that wall yeah i need your opinion with that when you come through that little sort of archway through to the wardrobes and the ensuite we used to have a radiator here i have got a full video that showed sort of like the process and how it all looked before we started but we've moved the radiator from there and put it under that window because it just makes more sense for a radiator to be under win a window doesn't it it also just gives you a little bit more room to walk by not having that radiator there but um this is what the wardrobe's looking like So before, it was like a little corridor type thing and it was such a waste of space because all the rails were really high up. I mean, I am 4 foot 11, but there was no way that anybody was hanging the clothes up there without having to stand on a ladder or some sort of stool. So it just wasn't practical at all. So um, we've both got a double wardrobe each. We've gone for the satin nickel handles on. I know a lot of people are going for black and I'm kind of thinking should I have gone for black but maybe I can add black touches here and there um, let me know what you're thinking colour scheme wise because obviously it's very plain and neutral at the minute um, and I need to add some stuff I'm thinking something on this worktop which is a Myra Stone top um, with this like marbling through it which is absolutely gorgeous um, really quite hard wearing as well because we've got this in our kitchen the same guy who fitted our kitchen by the way did our wardrobes but I'm thinking I need something in centre here to make sure that I don't bring up washing and leave it stuck on there and don't put it away because I've got a feeling I will end up doing that. But yeah, we've got these drawers, um, so quite nice wide drawers, which is what I wanted. And then I started filling up my wardrobe, but I do need to give it a good organise. But I've got like this section for all hanging stuff, so like coats and things like that. I do need to, like I said, go through it. Um, but we've got quite deep drawers here as well um so these are mine so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do it by like season so switch it around in winter take away put away all my um summer stuff and get all my winter stuff out and i do need to be doing some more selling so if you don't follow my vintage account make sure you do it it's, uh, babbling by the brook on vintage and then this is tom's he doesn't have the long section he's just got loads of drawers um but yeah, even like the hanging, we thought about this because I can get to that fine and then it's got this space at the top as well. There's a little radiator and we're going to struggle with this because if we do put curtains over there, we're not going to be able to put them over here as well. Which I don't mind to be fair and the reason why is because of this which I've had fitted. And I am so glad I've had this done. You might think it's a little bit random and why is it there? But it's for this reason. So at the moment, and for as long as I can remember, I've had all of my toiletries, skincare and things like that stored in like a big washing basket and everything goes and falls down to the bottom. I end up repeat buying things because I can never find anything. Whereas I'm going to have everything stored in here nice and neatly and organised. Um, so I cannot wait to do that. I might even do a video of me organising that whole cabinet. But yeah, it's going to be for like all my toiletries, fake tans, deodorants, things that end up getting left lying around if there's nowhere to put them. So yeah, instead of having that in the ensuite, I thought make use of that space because there's nothing else that you can put there and look how sort of narrow it is. 
absolutely love that and it doesn't block out any light either which is great let me know what you think of this island and what i should put on it um i'm thinking a tray with um like a diffuser maybe a candle some tissues or something like that um maybe a bit of jewelry on display i don't know but i definitely need something on there maybe a vase with a nice flower arrangement in there let me know what you think on to the ensuite. Like I said, this is all very much a blank canvas. There's no decor been put in here. I've not even got like hand wash or anything in here. And I'm hardly using it. So I did cleanse my face in here earlier. I'm not. That's why my balm's there still. Um, but this is what we've gone for. These tiles are from B&Q. I think, I think the sink was from Victoria Plumbing. And it's a matte ceramic sink. And we've gone for chrome fittings. On this wall here, we've got the sort of rectangular, like glossy, irregular tiles. My idea originally was to have a full wall of that because I thought it would look so nice and I even thought one wall of that in the shower would look good as well but that would be super impractical wouldn't it. The mirror, oh my god I love the mirror, it actually, oh it's not working, there's something wrong with it, we're trying to get in touch with the company um, but it's one of the backlit ones, I'll insert a picture of what it looks like when it's lit up but how gorgeous is that? And it's got like a cool setting and a warm setting and it's an anti-mist one as well. I just typed in on Google like, irregular backlit bathroom mirror and it came up. So I will link it, but the company have been a bit rubbish at getting back to us. So um, if you are thinking of buying this, it's definitely one thing to bear in mind. Look like there's tiny bits of like paint and stuff that needs coming off and we need to grow out the back, where the back of the toilet is as well. But the toilet's all finished off. This vanity unit is incredible. Look at how deep it is. That's just the vent that apparently needs fitting up there where the big hole is. Um, but look how deep it is. Like my massive shampoo bottles can be stored in there. So yeah, and I'm thinking of labeling these up as well. So actually getting use out of the product and then labeling them after. And I'll just keep decanting all my product into these. Um, they're just plastic white bottles, but you can easily take the labels off and just put nicer ones on. Um, and they'll look quite aesthetically pleasing over here in my new little shower niche which has been put in um we've gone for like a circular shower heads so everything's been kept quite rounded um we've got like the arched mirror we've got this like round sort of thing going on here um we've got the round sink um we've gone for this sort of like seamless shower tray as well so you don't have a step up i just wanted something that would be super easy to clean obviously this is going to get the most traffic because it's going to be what we use the most um i really like that drain as well by the way really easy to clean um and then we've gone for this so yeah that's the ensuite it just all needs deco now so even ideas in here i'd love to know what you think like what accessory what color accessories should i go for what do you think i should put here um, I just need like help because I don't want too much clutter going on because the more stuff you have the more dusting you've got to do and stuff I want to keep it quite simple so yeah now I just need to think about decor curtains um, if anybody's got any recommendations of where to get curtains that don't cost a million pounds but are big enough for that window this is our new light we got this from next home I um, can't remember what it's called now, but I'll leave that in the description box as well in case anyone's interested in that. But I just thought it was very pretty and very bedroomy. And I don't feel like I'm going to go off that anytime soon. I thought I'd just sit down and have a little chat while um, I show you some of, the mo some of the other little bits that we've bought so far. So other than the blinds, the mirror and the light that you've just seen, we've bought some bedside tables from Maid, which look like this. I'll put a little picture on. Um, so definitely adding some wood and things like that to break up the white a little bit. I'm thinking, should I put a rug under the bed as well when uh, we get the bed back in here? Um, the bed is from Next. If I can find a picture of what that looks like as well, I will show you that. I'm thinking bedding from Dusk. Now, I've never had an experience with Dusk before, um, but I see pictures on Instagram of these amazing, gorgeous, like luxurious beds um that have that bedding on it's just quite pricey so i don't know whether to invest or not into dusk bedding so let me know if you think it's worth it because my beds are super king and i need super king pillows so at the minute i've just got normal size pillows and they look a little bit lost on the bed i have got one set of bedding already um that my mum actually bought for me from sainsbury's um i think it was about 
20 something pounds down from nearly 60 or something but it's this gorgeous like almost grey toned kind of got like a little bit of a pink tone to it as well which is why I like it I'm going to just mix a lot of whites in with this um and I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous so it's got like um a texture to it but not a pattern as such which I absolutely love the other thing to show you is the lamps that we've bought to go on the new bedside tables these are from Cox and Cox um they had a discount running a couple of weeks ago um so I'd, I think I got 20% off of these and they were £35 each. I was expecting them to be a little bit bigger, I'm not going to lie. And I wasn't expecting the base to be so great. Let's open it up and see what it actually looks like though without the cellophane on it. So that's what it looks like. They are really sweet, aren't they? Oh, I do think that I do really like them. Um, I hope, I'm hoping they look good. But yeah, these are from Cox and Cox, so I'll leave these linked below in case anyone's interested as well. But they've got like a really nice white linen um, shade on them. And then this is like a really cool tone grey. Um, yeah, I think they'll look nice. Artwork, that's what I want to talk to you about. You'll be able to see more when I've got the bed in, but obviously, like I said before, the bed's going up against that wall. What do I put above the bed? Or the bed frame. Mm. I just don't know. I'd love to hear what you're thinking I should do. Um, even maybe a big olive tree or something in that corner. Am I a basic bitch? Yeah, I am. Anyway, you're a little bit lopsided, but it is the end of the video. Um, I just want to say thank you for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed having a little look around our master bedroom and en suite. And seeing our new doors that we've added. It's definitely feeling like the house is coming together now. We won't talk about what's going on down there in that side of the house. Do you know what? In fact, I'm going to keep it real. Moved a metre this way and that's what you can see from my landing. Um, so yeah, we've still got loads to be getting on with. Um, and I will be sort of documenting what we do with the spare bedroom stuff. Also, I think I'm going to do a Q&A next. Um, and I'm going to put a question box up on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram... Um, head over to my page if you want to ask a question because I feel like I've not done a QA and a for a while and just expect quite a few like homework hauls and things with me coming very very soon also if you want to put a question down below in the comments um, I will answer that in my next Q&A as well so thank you for coming back if you have watched my videos previously and I've been gone for a few weeks I know sometimes that when you've been watching somebody for a while and they disappear off the face of the earth, you forget to go back and watch them. So if you've taken the time to come back and watch one of my videos, then thank you so much. It really, really means a lot to me. If you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next video. Bye.